my friends. Uh, today we are going to read chapter five of Coles. You remember last time Stanley arrived at camp and he met Mr. Sir, and Mr. Sir told him he's going to be thirsty for a long time because it doesn't sound like Camp Green Lake's a very nurturing, hydrating place, right? Well, here we go. Chapter five. There were six large gray tents, and each one had a black letter on it, A, B, C, D, E, or F. The first five tents were for campers. The counselors slept in F. Stanley was assigned to D tent. Mr. Pendansky was his counselor. My name is easy to remember, said Mr. Pendansky, as he shook hands with Stanley just outside the tents. Three easy words. Pen. Dance. Key. Mr. Sir returned to the office. Mr. Pendansky was younger than Mr. Sir and not nearly as scary looking. The top of his head was shaved so close it was almost bald, but his face was covered in a thick, curly black beard. His nose was badly sunburned. Mr. Sir really isn't so bad, said Mr. Pendansky. He's just been in a bad mood ever since he quit smoking. The person you've got to worry about is the warden. There's really only one rule at Camp Green Lake. Don't upset the warden. Stanley nodded as if he understood. I want you to know, Stanley, that I respect you, Mr. Pendansky said. I understand you've made some bad mistakes in your life, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But everyone makes mistakes. You have done some bad things, but that doesn't mean you're a bad kid. Stanley nodded. It seemed pointless to try and tell his counselor that he was innocent. He figured that everyone probably said that. He didn't want Mr. Pendansky to think he had a bad attitude. I'm going to help you turn your life around, said Mr. Pendansky, but you're going to have to help too. Can I count on your help? Yes, sir, Stanley said. Mr. Pendansky said, good, and patted Stanley on the back. Two boys, each carrying a shovel, were coming across the compound. Mr. Pendansky called to them, Rex, Alan, I want you to come say hello to Stanley. He's the newest member of our team. The boys glanced warily at Stanley. They were dripping with sweat, and their faces were so dirty, it took a moment for Stanley to notice that one kid was white and the other was black. What happened to Barf Bag? asked the black kid. Lewis is still in the hospital, said Mr. Pendansky. He won't be returning. He told the boys to come shake Stanley's hand and introduce themselves, like gentlemen. Hi, the white kid grunted. That's Alan, said Mr. Pendansky. My name's not Alan, the boy said. It's Squid, and that's X-Ray. Hey, said X-Ray. He smiled and shook Stanley's hand. He wore glasses, but they were so dirty that Stanley wondered how he could see out of them. Mr. Pendansky told Alan to go to the rec hall and bring the other boys to meet Stanley. Then he led him inside the tent. There were seven cots, each one less than two feet from the next to it. Which was Lewis's cot? Mr. Pendansky asked. Barf bag slept here, said X-Ray, kicking at one of the beds. All right, Stanley, that'll be yours, said Mr. Pendansky. Stanley looked at the cot and nodded. He wasn't particularly thrilled about sleeping in the same cot that had been used by somebody named Barf Bag. Seven crates were stacked in two piles at one side of the tent. The open end of the crates faced outward. Stanley put his backpack, change of clothes, and towel in what used to be Barf Bag's crate. It was at the bottom of the stack that had three in it. Squid returned with four other boys. The first three were introduced by Mr. Pendansky as Jose, Theodore, and Ricky. They called themselves Magnet, Armpit, and Zigzag. They all have nicknames, explained Mr. Pendansky. However, I prefer to use the names their parents gave them, the names society will recognize them by when they return to become useful and hardworking members of society. It ain't just a nickname, X-Ray told Mr. Pendansky. He tapped the rim of his glasses. I can see inside you, Mom. You've got a big fat heart. The last boy either didn't have a real name or else he didn't have a nickname. Both Mr. Pendansky and X-Ray called him Zero. You know why his name's Zero? asked Mr. Pendansky. Because there's nothing inside his head. He smiled and playfully shook Zero's shoulder. Zero said nothing. And that's mom, a boy said. Mr. Pendansky smiled at him. 
If it makes you feel better to call me mom, Theodore, go ahead and call me mom. He turned to Stanley. If you have questions, Theodore will help you. You got that, Theodore? I'm depending on you. Theodore spit a thin line of saliva between his teeth, causing some of the other boys to complain about how they need to keep their home sanitary. You were all new here once, said Mr. Pendansky, and you all know what it feels like. I'm counting on every one of you to help Stanley. Stanley looked at the ground. Mr. Pendansky left the tent, and soon the other boys began to file out as well, taking their towels and changes of clothes with them. Stanley was relieved to be left alone, but he was so thirsty he felt as if he would die if he didn't get something to drink soon. Hey, uh, Theodore, he said, going after him. Do you know where I can fill my canteen? Theodore whirled and grabbed Stanley by his collar. My name's not Theodore, he said. It's Armpit. He threw Stanley to the ground. Stanley stared up at him, terrified. There's a water spigot on the wall of the shower stall. Thanks, Armpit, said Stanley. As he watched the boy turn and walk away, he couldn't for the life of him figure out why anyone would want to be called Armpit. In a way, it made him feel a little better about having to sleep in a cot maybe that had been used by somebody named Barf Bag. Maybe it was a term of respect. That is the end of chapter five. So Stanley meets some new people in this chapter. We meet some new characters. Um, take a second to think about who these characters are. Do you think they're going to be friends to Stanley? Are they going to be enemies? Maybe a little bit of both? See you next time for chapter six. Bye.